Hey, welcome to Me Going Fast. Today we're going to be talking about basics of go-kart steering. Big, so let's go ahead and take a look at some of the steering systems that I have here. Let's dive right in. And that's four through. Tube just comes down to the side. Up. Ooh, Air filter. What a day, what a day. Might as well give it a... Whether it's a race cart on the street battling an imaginary Donkey Kong, or a backyard cart with a fully functioning pumpkin catapult ready to fight zombies. A solid control behind the wheel can be a game changer. So when I got this beautiful bad boy right over here, it didn't want to turn. What's one of the easiest things to change on a go-kart for steering system? The toe. So adjustability on a lot of go-karts isn't really there, but you can adjust these heim joints. So when you pull the heim joint off of your, your spindle, you can actually rotate this in and then lock it with the locking nut that should be on there and change your toe angle. So what's toe angle? Toe angle is where your front wheels are parallel to one another is a zero toe angle. And when they are perpendicular directly to the front of the go-kart. When the go-kart came, the toe angle was zero, and because I had understeer, I wanted toes out. Front wheels are going to be pointing the tips out. Hey, Frankie, how's it going, buddy? Whoa, there is no need for that language. All right, we're going to be going over some steering basics. Toes out, toes in, your toes, steering geometry, what it is, how it can help you out. Positive versus negative camber. Caster wheel jacking. Bick and how I made an off-road go-kart faster by improving its steering. That's right, improving its steering actually made the go-kart faster, although I will say that it's probably a little bit of its stability. There was some shake and play to the wheels, but we'll go into that and show you a real-world example or examples. Why not? I've got three go-karts here, an oval, a flat track, and a backyard, and we're going to take a look at them all. So if both of your front wheels are pointing in the same direction when you turn, they're actually going to be fighting one another as to where your car will go. But when your wheels are at a different turning radii and your inner wheel is at a shorter angle and your outer wheel is at a longer arc, your cart isn't going to be fighting itself, but they're going to be working together in tandem with one another to get you that smooth turn. Taking a look at the parts of a go-kart steering, this is a flat track cart, and what we have here are spindles, and some people will call this the knuckle as well. We have a heim joint, which is adjustable, goes into the tie rod, another heim joint, and a pitman. A pitman then connects up to the steering shaft and going up to the steering wheel, allowing us to turn. Now this pitman is a little bit different from the backyard cart pitman, where it has two offset holes. And that does make a difference in your turning angles. So when we're talking steering geometry, we have Ackerman, anti-Ackerman, or reverse Ackerman. We have a somewhat Ackerman, if you would. Uh, we have Davis steering, and even Darwin had a play in steering geometry. If you set your steering up for the lowest speed your go-kart goes, you're gonna get some oversteer at your highest speed, so you do wanna be careful about where you're setting your steering geometry for. So over here we have something similar to the Ackerman setup, where we have the spindles that are pointing backwards behind the kingpin, and then the steering is attached behind the kingpin. Over here on the backyard go-kart, we have an anti-Ackerman or reverse Ackerman, where the spindles point forward, and the steering linkage is in front of the steering wheels themselves. Now, this is gonna give you a very good clean steer. This one can be a little bit complicated as you saw earlier. Toes in, toes out is part of the steering geometry and a way to adjust your steering linkage to make it so you can get a better angle between the two wheels. Taking a look at the steering where everything is behind the kingpins, if we turn left, our inside corner is gonna be turning significantly more than the outside corner. And if we turn out the opposite direction, now our inside corner, once again, is moving significantly more than the outside corner, but it's the other wheel. When we're taking a look at the anti-Ackerman, or reverse Ackerman, where everything is in front of the kingpin, and we turn the wheels to the, to the left, we'll actually be able to see that the outside wheel is turning more than the inside wheel. This is going to be making one of the wheels scrub significantly and fight the other. 
So I threw together some drawings in a physics software over here and we're going to see the actual angles as the turn occurs with Ackerman on the top and anti-Ackerman on the bottom. So we have our turning radius. The outside wheel is going to be less than our inside wheel when it comes to the Ackerman steering. And when we have anti-Ackerman steering, we can see that our scribble is highlighting that we're almost at 50 degrees on the outside wheel, whereas it's going to be at about 28 degrees on the inside wheel. So those two wheels on the anti-Ackerman are going to be scrubbing one another, and the Ackerman is going to give us a better, cleaner turn. So now I'm taking a look at anti-Ackerman and toes out. Why did I adjust the toes out with anti-Ackerman setup? And with the toes out anti-Ackerman setup, we're going to notice here that at our apex, we're going to be looking at a 3236 versus a 4928. So up at the top, we just straight toes, uh, toes at zero. We're going to be looking at where the outside is far greater than the inside. And with our toes angled out, we're actually going to have our inside angled better than the outside. Now our pitman might have only one hole in it, or it might actually have two holes, and those holes are off-centered. So what's the difference between one hole and two holes is you're going to have a greater amount of angle when your turn actually completes on the two hole for one side, not the other. So here we are roughly at apex and we're noticing that the outside tire is only turning at about 10 degrees, 11 degrees for the two hole pitman versus 23 degrees for the one hole pitman. And we have our inside wheel are relatively the same. Say our cart doesn't turn at all. We did have to adjust the toes out, but now we're getting oversteer. Well, we don't want to go back to not having any kind of steering whatsoever. What can we do? Well, shortening the pitman is actually going to be able to compensate for that oversteer. Here we have the same setup except for a shorter pitman. And what we're going to do on, on the bottom with the shorter pitman, the degree of change is significantly smaller than the one on the top with the longer pitman. All right, now seeing as how this is steering basics, I'm not going to try and dive into too much. I just wanted to give you some visuals here. Rack and pinion steering or Davis steering, two-hole pitman, one-hole pitman, anti-Ackerman, toes out on anti-Ackerman, reverse Ackerman. There are a few different things to learn, but we're really talking go-karts here. And the go-kart for your basics of steering are if it feels off or feels like you can get better, make minor adjustments test it out, have some fun. It's a go-kart, make small adjustments, keep driving, make sure that you don't get oversteer, make sure that you're taking care of your understeer. Have a blast with it. Positive versus negative camber. On my oval track go-kart, I'm running a negative camber. On the track, you're gonna see a lot of people using a negative camber. On a off-road go-kart, I'm running a positive camber. In order for me to adjust a positive camber on my off-road go-kart though, I actually had to weld in the spindle holes and re-drill them for a different angle. On a lot of off-road go-karts you can adjust camber with the springs or the shocks. Things to look into, negative, why would you be running a positive camber on a flat track? Maybe it's rainy, maybe your tires are worn. Things to just look into, these are just basic keywords and things to cover. So caster in a go-kart actually changes the angle of the tire in relation to the level it sits at. So with caster, the inside wheel should actually jack the cart up a little bit. When it jacks the cart up a bit, what's gonna happen is your go-kart is going to push to the outer angle and that's gonna jack up your inside rear tire. That inside rear tire is now no longer fighting with your outside rear tire, allowing you to get a better angle of turn. Just as you have the front wheels that are fighting each other, the rear wheels are fighting each other. So what is the difference with an on-track go-kart and wheel jacking versus off-road go-kart. If you do wheel jacking on an off-road go-kart, what's gonna happen? Are you likely to hit a bump and flip? Well, my basics on the basics for rule of thumb for off-road go-kart, don't get me wrong, this may be not the best way for everybody, a little more dangerous, but I just increase the power until the wheels are spinning. They're not fighting each other if they're just spinning. Add more power to it. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you have a great day.